Hi guys, my name is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I'm going to be doing a Q&A about our old farmhouse that we've been renovating. Now if you guys are new here, my name is Megan. I have this YouTube channel is all about motherhood and renovating our old farmhouse and homesteading and all of the stuff that we love. And we've been living in this old farmhouse for about three years now. It was a disaster when we bought it. It was, it was so bad, but we've spent the last three years fully renovating it. It's finally done. We've actually sold it. It's under contract currently. We're under contract on our new homestead on more land. But I've gotten a lot of questions about just the renovation process, selling the house process, just a lot of questions about this old house in particular. So I wanted to do a video dedicated to just answering some of your guys' questions about this house. I am planning on doing another one about our new house once we move in. But for now, this Q&A is about our old house that we've lived in for the last three years. So I have on my phone here some questions that you guys asked over on Instagram. If you wanna be a part of submitting questions for any Q&As like this, make sure you head over to my Instagram. It's Wilson Family Homestead. And then anytime I do a Q&A, you guys can submit your own questions as well. And also, since I am planning on doing a Q&A about the new house, you can go ahead and if you have any questions now while you're watching this, if you think of any random questions about our new house, go ahead and submit them in the comment section and I will go ahead and collect all those from the YouTube comment section and I'll also put a question box on Instagram when I'm ready to do that Q&A. But make sure you're thinking about what you want to ask me about our new farmhouse on land for the next Q&A. But anyway, let's get right into this Q&A. The first question is, how did you manage living in a remodel with little children? This was actually really hard, especially when I first started crawling and you know, walking around independently and I couldn't just like keep her up out of the dirt and the dust all the time. We did completely finish the bathroom remodel before she was done because that was the worst room. It was, it was horrible. The floor was soggy and nasty and gross. We wouldn't even walk in there without shoes. There was huge holes into the crawl space behind where the washer and dryer were. It was, it was terrible. So that was our main goal when, when we moved in. We started on that renovation right away. I was like, I was very early pregnant with our first. So like we have to finish this part before the baby's here. So at least that one room was all done before she was born. The rest of the house was still bad. Like it was hard for me to get over that there was just construction dust a lot of times. The floors were pretty rough because they were sub floors in a lot of the house still. So it, it was definitely difficult, but I feel like it was very, very good for us. It chilled me out a lot as a mom. Our kids are just more chill with stuff than they would have been otherwise. I feel like overall it was a really good experience, but like in, in the middle of the process, there were some really difficult points where I had to go hide in the master bedroom while Luke was working on the kitchen because there was a lot of power tools and I wanted to keep the kids out of the way of the power tools. And so there was some like inconvenient points like that, but Overall, I would say, even though it was really hard, it was really good for us. Question number two, why do you want to move, especially after working so hard to make your house so perfect? I got this question so much, especially in our home tour video. People, people watched the video, and I had mentioned in the beginning of the video that we had our house listed, and I had so many people asking like, why the heck are you leaving this house? It's so perfect. I don't understand why you're moving out. But moving after two to three years was the plan from the get-go with this house. This little farmhouse is in town. It is on two city lots. So we have some room to do the stuff that we wanna do, but we originally bought it as a fix and flip because it was literally all we could afford. As our first home, we were a very newly wed couple. So it being all we could afford and we didn't want to end up in town, we kind of more looked at it as an investment, kind of a stepping stone to get to our forever homestead. So yes, even though it is so perfect and it's kind of a bummer that we lived in it like when it was terrible for so long and then now it's finally exactly how we want it and we're leaving, it seems a little weird, but it was always the plan to do that and we'll make our next house just as beautiful. What was your first impression when you bought it? I think, Looking back, I think our first impression was kind of like, what have we gotten ourselves into? Because <laughs> it was, it really did need a lot of work. It was a little bit scary. It almost, almost wasn't even livable. Like, we did live in it while we fixed it up, but it was, it was almost bad enough that if we had had all these little kids when we first moved in here, I don't even know 
I mean, it would have been fine, but it was bad. It was really bad. It took a lot of imagination and dreaming of what it, it could end up like to get it to that point because it was hard to picture it being not so scary looking. But I'm really glad we stuck with it and we kept working on it because now it, it, that it's to that point, I'm like, man, I almost can't even picture what it looked like when we first moved in because it's just changed so much. Did restoration seem intimidating? Yes, I would say yes, especially me having no experience with renovation at all and this being our first ever experience with being homeowners. It seemed pretty intimidating at first. I did know that Luke would be doing most of the remodel work because that's just, that's just his thing. He had quite a bit of carpentry experience coming into it, so he did know what he was doing, but I think just him thinking about the volume of work that would need to be done did seem intimidating. But yes, it did seem like we knew it would be a very long, hard, exhausting job, and there was just a lot of things that we didn't totally know what we were doing until we were doing it and we were like watching YouTube videos like how do we do this? How do we install tile in the shower? And we would watch YouTube videos on how to do things and figure it out. But it was a huge learning and growing experience for us. But yes, it did seem very intimidating at first. Is it hard for you to think about leaving the place your babies were born? Yes, this is one of the hardest parts for me because I get so attached to places where memories are made especially houses you live in. We've had some of the best years of our lives here. Yes, our babies were born in this house. We've had two home births. I can point out the spots on the floor where each of them were born, which is something super special and I feel like not something just anyone can say. So I definitely don't take that for granted. It's something that's very special to me about this house. So thinking about leaving has been very hard and I feel like we've been just so busy with the process of selling it and trying to buy our next house that I haven't really been letting myself think about it as much as I should. Like I haven't really quite processed it. And I know that especially as we're packing and moving stuff out and we're driving away, it's gonna really hit me hard that we're leaving this place with so many memories. And I think that's when I'll kind of break down and cry a little bit. And then just like when we drive past here later to just see what's going on with the house, just see, kind of see what the people are doing to the yard and stuff. I think that will be really hard too. It'll just feel very final. But I just keep reminding myself that we're gonna fill our next house with just as lovely of memories and we'll have this baby I'm currently pregnant with will be born there and that will really help too. It, and before we know it, we'll have had two or three babies born there and it will just, we'll fill that house with good memories too and it won't seem so hard to be not in this house anymore. Do you own a TV? I didn't see one in your home tour. If you guys missed the home tour, I will link it down below and in the cards. But yes, we do own a TV. We took out a lot of the extra stuff in our house before we listed it. We wanted it to just be kind of clear of clutter. We put a lot of stuff in a storage unit. We used to have our TV up on top of the piano and I never really loved it there. There's also a desk next to the piano that we took out for showings as well. That the desk is back because we do use the big computer a lot, but the TV, I've, we haven't brought it back and I haven't really been missing it at all. Me and Luke do enjoy watching a show in the evenings after the kids go to bed, but we've just been using a laptop set up on a coffee table in front of the couch and it's actually just been really nice to do that because you can put it away when you're done and it's not like out looking ugly for the rest of the time. So because we don't watch a ton of TV, just a short little show in the evenings and the kids don't watch any TV at all. I don't know if we'll set up the TV in the new house. We'll see. I kind of like the setup we have now. What inspired the yellow doors? I've always been super obsessed with mustard yellow. It's my favorite color ever. I would have every single shirt of mine in that color if I could get away with it. But I hadn't really considered, or maybe I just haven't, hadn't gotten brave enough to paint something in our house that color until I saw that farmhouse vernacular painted her whole kitchen that color and I was like, that is amazing. I have to paint something on this house yellow before we leave. I have to leave my mark. <laughs> kind of in a way is like what I thought of it as. So because the outside of our house is a dark blue and the trim is white, I was like, if we painted the doors a mustard yellow, that would just pop so beautifully against the blue. And so that's what we did. We painted the front and the back door the yellow and I love it. And in the next house, after we finish the kitchen renovation, I don't know if we'll change the layout or anything in the kitchen at all, but the kitchen will get painted mustard yellow 
eventually in my new kitchen because <laughs> I love having something on our house that color. Did you add the French doors or were they, were they already there? We added those in. The back door was just a single exterior door before. It did have a window in the door with blinds, but the door was really old and needed to get replaced anyway. There was a window to the left of, if you're inside looking at the door, there was a window to the left. So we were kind of, I don't remember which one of us had the idea to put in French doors, but we just took out the window and the door and put French doors in. It just makes it feel so much more open and big, that entryway, and it really makes the kitchen just flow out into the porch and it makes it just feel really open and nice. And so I'm really happy with the, the French door decision. <laughs> How big is your house? So the house is 1,176 square feet. So it's not, it's not huge. It does have two stories. The little bedrooms are upstairs. I do wish I had one more bathroom. That would make it totally perfect for a family to like live here for a long, long time, even with a lot of kids. So that's the only thing. I wish it was just enough bigger to have one more bathroom, but this has still been plenty big enough for us. I kind of do like having a bit smaller of a house because there's less to clean. What is the layout of your house and property? So you'll kind of be able to see it in the home tour, which I will have linked already, that when you come in the front door, you come into the living room right away, which is on the northeast side of the house. The bedroom is right next to it on the southeast side. The kitchen is in the southwest corner and the bathroom and laundry room are in the northwest corner. Yeah, that took a lot of thinking. And then you, the stairway is through the kitchen, up, up the stairs, and then there's two little bedrooms upstairs. So that's kind of the layout of the house. The front yard doesn't really have much of anything. The sidewalk goes through. We do have some flower beds around the house, but then you go around to the backyard and that's where we have the other city lot because we're on two city lots. The house is on one and then we have a huge yard. And half the yard is our garden and grass area for the kids to play in. And then the other half is our chicken yard where the chicken coop is and that also is where we have our rabbit hutches they're inside the chicken coop so that's just kind of a very general layout of the property but if you want to see more of kind of how it's laid out make sure you go watch the home tour how old is the house this house was built in 1905 so it is exactly 116 years old i generally just say 120 rounding up <laughs> but 116 years old so it is quite old, which I think is the coolest thing ever. I'm very drawn to old houses, clearly, because our next house is also 100 years old. But I think just the fact that they, even if you don't know the history, they have so much history, they've seen so much, they, I love the style. I just love old houses, they're very cool. And then the last question is, do you know anything about the original owners from 100 years ago? So no, unfortunately we don't. I don't really know how to find that out. I tried to do some research and try to look some stuff up. I found some different sites where you could type in the address and they said they, would ha they had some history stuff, but then you got to that point and they're like, we'll show you this stuff, but you gotta pay for it. I'm like, that's annoying. So if you guys have any ideas about how to go about finding out about the original owners and then the owners since then, just like information about your house, let me know. Cause I am very, I've been curious like the whole time we've lived here, like who built it, I wanna know about them. But yeah, I, I tried to do it myself, but I didn't really come up with much. So that is pretty much all the questions I got about this house. Again, if you have any questions about the new house, let, go ahead and leave them in the comments here. But I hope you enjoyed this question and answer session. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and head over to my website and subscribe to my email list. But thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.